Hey you guys, Guy Stevens here. I haven't made one of these in a long time, so I thought maybe we would learn some FileMaker today. There is a thing that I've been wanting to make a video about for a long time, and that's uh, sub summary parts, because I think most people probably don't really know what that is and what that does. So let's make a tiny little exercise where we learn sub summary parts and all kinds of other cool things. So I've got a new file. Let's go to File Manage Database, and I gave my file a name. And because I gave it a name, FileMaker has already automatically um, created a table for me, which actually I don't really want. So I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to also remove occurrences from the graph. And I'm going to make a table called expenses. Because what we're going to do here is make a little expense table where we note expenses. And then we're going to make a, like a report overview that shows my expenses per... Um, per year, per month, per week, and etc, etc. And um, so I'm going to start with expenses and I'm going to say that as always I need to have an ID field that is set to number and that's set to enter a serial number because that's what you always need in every field. Now what else do we need? Um, every expense is made on a certain date and if we have a date then this type needs to be date as well and we're going to create this one and we're going to say that if we do um, this seriously we will be uh, entering these expenses like as, the, as we make them so our date instead of entering it manually it could be auto entered and it can be the creation date so uh, that when I enter a new expense, the date is automatically set to today's date. And then I don't have to set it manually. Um, it could be, of course, that uh, the expense was made uh, before uh, today. And then you'd have to change the date. But this way it's already set. Okay, what else do we have? We might have a type of expense. And a type is, of course, not a date. It's a text. Like, for instance, some of the expenses could be rent or food or electricity or I don't know what. So let's make a type. Then let's do expense. Um, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, so that you can actually write, write down what the uh, actual expense is. And then there will be an amount. And an amount is going to be not a text, but that's going to be a number. So let's create that one too. Okay, very simple, very basic. I think we can get started with this. Now, um, we had that table in the beginning and we have our expenses here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Manage, Layout. And I'm going to delete this one because I actually don't need that one. So let's delete. Uh, okay and then I am where I need to be. So let's exit our layout and let's have a look. FileMaker has created for me this kind of nice little layout which is cool but what I always like to do is I like to have one layout in table view and one layout in form view so that I can um, better look at what data I have going on. So uh, it's a bit tricky. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a new layout first. So I'm going to call this one Layout Expenses so that I know that this is my layout that I'm going to be uh, working in. It's going to show record from, records from expenses it's for my computer and this one can be in a form view. So I'm going to finish this and this might look a little bit odd because now I've got my expenses which is actually still in form view but what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit this layout and I'm going to go uh, put this one in table view. There, so now I have one in table view and one in layout view. The reason that I do this is when I start adding fields to this layout and I make maybe certain fields um, like checkboxes or radio buttons, then I won't be able to see the actual data that's in here. But when I go back to my table view, I will actually be able to see what's going on in that, in those fields. Uh, because I'm actually just seeing the actual data and not the layout objects. Okay, let's um, edit our layout and what we can do is this really handy thing. We can go in and we can do a view field picker so we can choose all the fields we want. I don't need to see my ID so I'm going to choose my date, my type, my expense and my amount and I'm going to drag them on here. There you go and I can choose kind of how they are placed etc on here but this is fine for me. So I'm going to close this, exit my layout and now when I hit new record up top here my date is automatically filled in so I can hit my tab and I could say for instance rent and then the expense is let's say um, I don't know 500, oh no, um, rent for the m month of what is this January? And then I could say amount, let's say 500. 
Okay, now I can start to make this look a little bit prettier because my date can be like a drop down calendar with an icon to show and hide the calendar. This amount could be, um, and then I have to click these double A's here. I can maybe put my amount like this, and then under data, I could say that um, my data formatting is this is actually a currency, and this can be like something like this, and then my negative can be red. Yeah, so that way it looks a bit more like this. Okay, cool. So this is a good thing to start with. And now if I go to my expenses here, then I can see this stuff in my um, table view. And I also have my um, my nice, nice layout for data entry here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly add a few records so that I have some records to play around with. And there we go, I've got uh, some records that I completely, totally made up. And now you can see I have a whole list of these things. If you go into uh, layout expenses, you make a new record, you can just use your tab to kind of go through here, first maybe select a date. And then uh, for instance, the type is something that happens a lot. So what you, uh, the, where you have the same thing often, what you can do is either uh, select this field and you can choose here under data to auto complete using existing values. And that kind of makes it easier for you to enter stuff. So that if you, for instance, type in food, you just have to type in the F and then it already suggests uh, that existing value. And then you could say take out and then you could say, I don't know, $10. All right, cool. So now we have a list of a bunch of stuff. Now we're going to put this into a report. So we're going to go into edit layout mode. Then we're going to choose a new layout. And then let's say that's going to be our list of expenses. And then we're going to go and choose for computer. We're going to make this a list and then we're going to finish. Okay, so now what I get is uh, we see that our body is very narrow. And we do have a header and a footer, but uh, the idea is that you put all of your fields uh, kind of in a list like that. And we can again use our field picker if we want. So we can choose for date, type, expense and amount, and we can just choose to put them like this and then maybe have the um, label up top. So let's see if that works. That doesn't look very encouraging, but let's try and see what gives. Yeah, that does seem to kind of work. Maybe they need to go a little bit lower. Yeah, like so. And then maybe my labels need to go a little higher. Okay, something like that. Okay, our date field is about, let's see, this is centimeters, so that's not interesting. Let's click here till we get, uh, oops, till we get points. It's 21 points high. Our body is 40 points high. That's a little high, so let's drag this one something like so. Now if we exit our layout we can see that we get an entire list so that's kind of cool. Um, and uh, one thing that I dislike is the fact that only these have kind of field borders around them and this is the uh, selected record. I think that's kind of annoying because it makes the rest a bit more difficult to make out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this layout. I'm going to click on this little pencil or I'm going to go to layout um, layout setup which is the same and I'm going to uncheck this delineate fields on current record only because that way I think this looks a little bit more clear. Okay what I can do is I can maybe change this one again to be something like this and then maybe set this to be a value or currency like I did before. There we go and then it'll look a little bit nicer. Okay. So this is pretty simple stuff. Now, how are we going to group these things together? Now we can group them together in multiple different ways, but the easiest that you could see right here is you have, for instance, a date field. So you can group those things by date. So you can see which expenses you made on a certain date. And then um, you could also kind of show the total for that date. That's the first thing we could try to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into edit layout and well, actually, if we exit the layout, what we could do is we can start by, no, let's not start like that. Um, let's go to layouts and let's go to layout setup. Oh no, that's not correct. It's a, a part setup because we're gonna add another part. And the part that we're going to create is going to be a sub summary, 
when sorted by type no date we're gonna start with the, the date first. so we're gonna sort by date so what you gotta remember here is that I'm gonna make a sub summary part but uh, this part here says when sorted by date that's what you gotta remember we will see why in a moment this part can be printed above or below I want to this printed above and then I can see that I have my header my sub summary by date is a leading part and then I have my body and my footer okay that's cool I'm done and what I'm gonna do then is I could either just drag this one up here but what I often like to do I don't really know why I just take my text tool and then I'm gonna go and do insert merge field or you can use this um, like this is a, I think a option command M and then you can choose a field that you would like to put there as a merge field and that's gonna be my date did I choose date yeah I did choose date yeah so I'm gonna set sort this by date so I'm gonna set my date up here and again my part is pretty big maybe I should make my date a bit bigger and a bit bolder but even then that part is too big so let's go and have a look at what this looks like if I exit my layout and then I can see that actually nothing has happened. I do still have my body part, but um, my sub summary part is not showing up. And the reason that this is not showing up is because I told you you have to pay attention to where it says when sorted by. And when sorted by date, then this will show up. It's not the records are not sorted now, so this sub summary part is not going to show up. This might sound like a bad idea, but it's actually kind of good. Uh, we will find out later why this is good. So when we sort by date, we can sort ascending or descending. Um, if we do descending, then we can see the most recent ones up top. So if we sort this, then all of a sudden our part does show up, and now we can see um, the most recent expenses are up top. Um, on this date here and then uh, these multiple items are grouped by date now this is kind of silly because most of them only have one expense per date but it, but it doesn't matter some of them here like these are all paid on the same date now I have them grouped by date okay now what's the next step because what I can see now is these um, three expenses paid on that day maybe I would like to know the total of these expenses that are paid on that day so I would like the total of these three this sounds maybe like a difficult thing to do but actually it's extremely simple let's go to file manage database and here what we've got is our amount what we're gonna do is in that sub summary part we can create a summary field which summarizes the records that are all in that summary part very simple what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new one called s underscore because it's gonna be a summary field and I always call my summary fields S underscore and then I'm gonna say sum underscore amount cool and this type is gonna be a summary so let's create this one and then it's gonna ask me what field do you want to summarize and I would like to see the total of the amount you can also do other kinds of summaries like the average the count the minimum the maximum which is all useful in certain uh, occasions but most most often you'll probably just use the total of a numbered field so now I've got my amount and I've got my sum amount so if we um, go in here what we can do is in our edit layout we could just take this one and then I'm using a Mac so I'm gonna hit alt I don't know exactly what it is in Windows I'm gonna alt drag this field up and as you can see there's this green plus sign that allows me to copy this one up here and then I want to specify my field and I'm gonna specify as a field my s sum amount and I can create a label that's fine and I can see that I do have to bring it up a little bit higher because otherwise it's not gonna fit in my part there I hope that fits and I'm gonna say that this one needs to be in my total okay let's try this out and see what it does it's a bit hard to see um, because it's the same color but you can see that here I have 575 and 30 I'm not that good at math so I don't know exactly how much that is but it looks like that could be kind of correct 605 sounds pretty good to me okay so let's go back in here and let's maybe make this one uh, let's give this one a fill color of let's say a light yellow and let's make this one bold and maybe this one as well bold Boom. and then you can see that it becomes a little bit clearer now on this day you can see the total amount now maybe this is not the handiest way to see this maybe what you could also do 
is go back into layouts part setup and you could make you could create another sub summary part when sorted by date you could also print this above or no you could print this below uh, let's see actually I didn't even know if that works uh -uh -uh. sub summary date print below Oh yes, you can do that. You can have a sub summary date part that's on top and one that's uh, below. Let's click done. And now what you could do is you could take these guys and bring them down because sometimes that's just a little bit more what you would expect to see. You would expect the sum to be at the bottom and not at the top. So now we can see for this date, we have a bunch of expenses and the total is at the bottom now. So two sub summary parts, one, uh, on the top and one on the bottom so this looks kind of neat and this is kind of handy one thing that's missing is maybe an, a total at the bottom but we can do that we can go into edit layout we can go to layouts part setup what other parts could we create let's have a look either a trailing grand summary or a footer but we have one already a trailing grand summary is not such a bad idea let's hit ok the trailing grand summary is here let's say that we are done and we can see it here and then we could take these fields again alt drag these down and maybe I want this total to really stand out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a lot bigger boom and then maybe I need to move this one over a bit and make this one a bit larger like so boom okay let's have a look so now for instance in a a day where there is only one expense the total is the same multiple expenses get added up and then at the bottom let's have a look our total of all our expenses so actually by just creating one single uh, summary field FileMaker itself makes all these kinds of calculations to sub to add up um, the ones that it needs to add up and you don't really have to worry about um, any of it you don't have to make a bunch of different fields or um, anything like that so that's a really flexible way to get um, to get your um, to get some sort of a report and to get a guy a kind of a nice overview um, of your expenses in this case per day now per day is maybe not that very interesting maybe we would like to get our uh, expenses split up in different ways um, and let's see if we can come up with something more interesting like for instance um, this is per day what if we would like to see our expenses per month or per year? If we look into our layout here, we can see that this one, this subsummary part, is a subsummary part when sorted by date. But how can we sort by month or by year? Because we would have to have a subsummary part for that, and we don't actually have the year itself or the month itself. But those things are actually very easy to calculate. If we go back into our expenses table view here, then I'm going to show you how we can extract the year, the month, and even the week from the date. It's very simple. If we go to File Manage Database, then we can make a new field. And let's make it a calculation field. So let's say C underscore. And let's see which one would we like. Let's do the year first. C year. Okay, then let's uh, make this a calculation field. And as soon as we create that one, FileMaker is gonna ask us, well, what is it exactly that you would like to do? And what's really cool is you can go and look for stuff in here, but if you kind of know what you want to do, then you can just type it ahead here. And it kind of tells you already, it returns a number representing the year in which the date occurs. Okay, okay so if we select this one, we hit tab, then FileMaker already kind of gives me the uh, formula that I need to use. So I, I want to have the year of a certain date, and my date is of course here. So I'm going to double click this one so that this field is used to extract the date. And the calculation result is going to be a number because this is going to give me something like 2015 or 2016. Let's hit OK and let's hit OK again. And now I can't see this yet, but I can modify this layout. And what I can do is I can add this field to my table view. Actually, I can add the sum amount as well and the year. There you go, both of them are added now. And so I can see that my year is here 2016, here is 2015, because those dates actually fall in the previous year. So that's kind of cool, a very simple way to kind of calculate which year this expense has been in. Uh, I also added this sum amount field, which if you can remember was a summary field. 
And what you can see in this amount right now is the um, total for all the expenses. And actually what this summary field is, is going to do, it's always going to do exactly this. Uh, this is the sum total of amounts, so it's going to show the sum total of all these amounts. If I would now, for instance, do a find, and I would say find me the type of food, and I would perform the find, then what you can see is I've only found a couple of records, all the ones for the type food. I've found five of 17 in total, but my summary amount has now changed. It's now a different amount. It's not the 2000, I don't know how many uh, it was before, but right now it's showing me the sum amount of these amounts right here. So what um, you have is, this is very handy, even if you do a like a found set, FileMaker will show you the total sum of these amounts that you have just found. So you don't have to make any kind of strange fields or strange calculations. If you need to know stuff like this, um, a summary field can be extremely handy. Okay, great, so we have the year. Um, what else could we get? Could we get maybe the month? Let's try and find out. Let's go to File Manage Database. And let's make another field. We have we have C year. Let's see if we can do C month. Uh, let's create this calculation and let's do month. And as you can see now, you have different options here. You've got month and you've got month name. Month returns a number from 1 to 12. Month name returns the full name of the month for a date. Hey, that's kind of handy. I can use that in my... Um, I can use that in my sub summary part so I can display the name of the month. That's kind of cool. Let's say the month name of our date right here. And that's not going to result in a number because this is the month name. The month name is going to result in a text. Let's hit OK and let's see if this works because this looks kind of cool. Let's modify add our C month. And what do we see here? January, December, November. Uh, this is kind of cool. This way I've got an actual. Uh, field that contains my actual month that is so awesome let's go back to file manage database and let's see I am however gonna change this to month name you will understand why all later let's change the name and then what else are we gonna get see week maybe Nah, let's not do that but you can do that you can get the week number as well we're not gonna do that right now it's not really necessary okay Cool, so we have the year and we have the month name. Okay, now we can go back to our list right here. And what we can do is, well, actually, again, this is now not sorted. So let's sort by date. Okay, and now my sub summary part shows up again. Let's go and tweak these things a little bit. Let's change this first sub summary part. And let's say that we don't really want the things sorted, uh, sorted by date, but we would like to get them sorted by year. That's kind of cool. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this one and I'm going to use that Alt Command M shortcut to get my year in here. And let's see if this has already worked. Then I have to change this one as well if you remember. That was sorted by the same field. So let's exit our layout. Let's see what happened. Again, um, this is not sorted correctly right now. So let's clear this and let's say C year. And I'm going to maybe do this in descending order. Let's sort and let's see what happens. Now I have everything sorted by year. So all my 2016 expenses are here. The total for 2016 is here. And the total for 2015 is underneath here. So that's kind of cool. And that's kind of handy. And I've got my total as well. That of course stays the same. Okay, this is cool. But these are different months. So let's go back into edit layout. Let's go to layouts part set up and let's just create some more let's create a sub summary when sorted by month that's kind of cool okay so I'm gonna print this one above and then maybe create again one that is uh, the same but sorted below or printed below okay so now I have my year and my month and here it's my year and my month I think that's not a good idea I think this one needs to be there Mm, I don't know if that's gonna look good or not, but we'll just have to look and see. Okay. Uh, let's see. What do we have here? This sub summary part. Whoops. Was sub summary part is what? Which one is this? I can actually just use this here. Is it this one? Yeah. This is sub summary by year. Okay. Cool. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I just have to make that summary field. I have to put it in every sub summary part, like so. 
and then this one can be made a little bit higher so like this and then I have here the year which is the yellow one and then I have the month which is underneath it okay I'm gonna click this away again so I'm gonna alt drag this one over here and I'm gonna double click this and again I'm gonna do insert merge field or that shortcut combination and I'm gonna get my month name in here okay let's drag this one up a bit okay so let's maybe make my uh, this one was my year let's give this the same color and then let's give my month name also some sort of a funky color so that I can kind of keep them apart I don't know if this is going to be clear or not but we're gonna see that in a minute let's exit the layout and again it's not entirely showing it's just showing sorted by year but that's because the sort is not complete yet let's do um, let's add our month and you can't see the month field in here because the actual field is not on here but if we go here to the current table of expenses then we can see our month name field so maybe we should do this one descending as well and let's sort this and now I can see that in here I have January and I have my total for January actually all of these are all in January so um, I'm not really seeing any other months and then in here then I have my November and my December now you do have the totals at the bottom I don't know if this is better or not you could also just choose to put the total up top here so you have it right next to the month name and then right next to the year name you'll have your total there that's another way to go then you will have less of these parts because now it is starting to look a bit colorful actually let's try that out let's put the total for the purple one in the purple one here and let's put the total for the yellow one up up there oh, let's hope that fits and then we can get rid of these two we can just click and delete and let's exit our layout yeah this could work as well it just depends on what you prefer so now you know that there are different ways of doing this if we go in and change something here like let's say that this one was not in 01 but 02 then we can see that we get um, this now uh, shows up in my different month here let's add but another one in 02 there you go so um, one thing we're noticing now is that um, we have January and February but here we have November and December so the sort is not really a sort of the months is not really happening exactly correctly and the reason is that I have created a sub summary when sorted by the month name now the month name is going to be sorted alphabetically and that's not really ideal um, this way our months are never going to show up in the correct order so what I can do to fix that is I can go to file manage database and next to my month name if you remember I also had a other uh, possibility and that was month see you have the month name which returns the full name but you also have the month which returns a number from 1 to 12 okay let's try that one month for the date here this is my date field this is going to result in a number so that's good so let's hit OK and let's look at this in our table view really quick to kind of see what it does I'm going to exit my layout I'm going to modify and I'm going to add my month field so now I have the month name and the month and my month name is of course the name and my month returns a number so now what I can do in my list I can edit my layout and I can go back into this sub summary part and I can say my sub summary when sorted by not the month name but the month and that way it's going to be sorted uh, more correctly because I had a, a month okay yeah that's cool um, so now it's going to sort by month number that's good I'm going to exit this and again my month has disappeared because my sort is still by the month name and not by the month number this one and here I can choose to sort it in a descending order so if we do this now then we can see our February is the most recent month is up top and then January and here as well the December is up top and November is below that so you can see that you can sort um, on one field but then display another field in here and with when it comes to months you're always going to do that you're going to sort by month number but display the month name okay this is kind of cool uh, and kind of handy but we can also um, 
do this slightly differently if we want. Um, and actually, um, there is another thing I'm going to show you first. Let's go to File, Manage, Layouts. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this one. And I'm going to call this one List Expenses Simple. So what we can always do is we don't have to show all of these details because the most of the time the essence of a report is that you just show like the main overview and for that we don't need to have a body part so we can just delete the body part yes I want to delete that one and then if we exit our layout what we can see is all our expenses but just summarized we can see the total per year and the total per month and uh, you don't really have to worry about the details because the details are not important. I just want to get like a, a general overview of what's going on. So you can see that it's actually even possible to make a list layout that only has sub summary parts and a trailing grand summary, a header and a footer, and it doesn't even have a body part. So sometimes that can be really handy to just display a sort of an overview by, uh, and then you can even choose because you now we have this sorted by year and by month. We can also just clear the month, and if we sort it then, then we just see the totals per year. And that way, by just sorting this list differently, you get a different um, kind of set of of information really so there you go okay so that's uh, kind of cool that's a cool way to um, create um, a really cool report um, and if you have for instance a solution where you're making bills or whatever then it's always handy to have this kind of report to go to it's always fun to kind of see on like a yearly and a monthly basis what kind of expenses you have or what kind of income you have that's always the most fun to see we've sorted this into in like a certain order right now but we can also do this differently we can also and maybe we can just uh, kind of uh, continue on this one we could just go and change all these parts around a bit we could go in here and we could say um, let's see with layouts part setup we could choose to create a sub summary and we could sort for instance as well by type what if I want to know for each type of expense how much it costs me on a monthly or a yearly basis um, let's print this one above then my type is here so let's put the type up top so then we sort by type first and then we sort by year maybe let's uh, delete this one and then we'll just look at the expenses per month let's do that so we've got our type and our month and our grand summary okay cool so let's take this one let's make this one yellow again that was kind of a nice color then let's take my text here uh, let's make a big text I'm gonna do my alt option command M to get my type in here and I would like to maybe make that a bit bold and bigger that way my type is really standing out again I'm gonna get this total per type I'm gonna alt drag this up here that's nice so I've got my type per month let's exit my layout and again this is not happening correctly because of course as super important and something that you might forget is that you have to always get your sort correctly uh, I'm gonna sort by month but also by type so let's get the type up top and the type is a text so that's gonna be sorted um, alphabetically so we can do this ascending and this one descending let's sort and let's have a look and now what I get is I get my uh, actually maybe I should make this one less not bold or at least a bit smaller so it doesn't so it's a bit clearer to see so now I've sorted the other way around it is by type and now I can compare for each type the different months that I have kind of had expenses in and so again I can see the total per type and then I can see kind of the total per month and then my grand total of course in the beginning so this is um, just by changing the sub summary parts around we can now have a total different kind of report that gives us a different kind of information we can see that the rent has always stayed the same but for instance utilities are kind of fluctuating a little bit uh, and one month it's a little more and one month it's a little bit less 
So this is actually very simple by just creating a subsummary um, field of the total or a subsummary uh, or a summary field of your expense amount. You can just put that in a subsummary part and then depending on how you stack them and how you sort them, you can get all kinds of different reports that show you um, your data in all kinds of different ways. All right, I hope this was kind of helpful. I hope you learned something new. Uh, you can download this file in the comments uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao. Maybe one more thing that I forgot to say is now that we have our different kind of reports, this one is uh, by type and then by month. If we go back into this one, this sort is kind of gone, the sort that we had before, so the sort uh, should have been by um, by year and by month, but now it's type and month because I did that in the other um, in the other layout here. What you can do to kind of force a layout to sort correctly is you can go and set a script trigger in layouts, layout setup. You can choose uh, to create a script trigger on the on layout enter event. So as soon as you enter that layout, you could run a script trigger and in order for you to do that you first need to have a script we don't have any of them so we can make a new one here and we could say sort by type and month and then we can hit ok that's the name now we can say sort records and we choose use the tab to select that one and then we go into the settings and we're going to say perform without dialog and specify sort order and because right now it is still sorted by type and month this is the suggestion that shows up and we're going to just take that one and hit ok 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 and then um, when we go into this layout, layout, it will always be sorted like this. So what we can do now is when we go into this one, this one needs to be sorted differently. So we can sort and we can say, I don't want to sort by type, but I want to sort, for instance, by uh, year. I'm going to put the year up top and in descending order so that's the sort that I want for this one okay that's kinda cool another way to make that script is to go to the script workspace which is huge apparently I'm gonna make it a bit smaller and in our script workspace we can see the script we made before but we can make a new script actually I'm gonna make this a bit wider so we can see what's going on we can make a new script so I'm gonna hit this plus sign and I'm gonna say sort by year and month and then I'm going to go in here and hit sort records tab. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say perform that dialog, specify sort order by year and month, which is the one that I just did. So now that is suggested, which is good. Then I'm going to hit command S to kind of save this script. So now I have two different scripts, which both have one script step in them. And then I can go into the um, edit layout, layouts, layout setup. And then I can say with the script triggers on my on layout enter event, I can um, select this one by year and month okay that's a script that I made then so then if I am in this one it is sorted by year and by month if I now go to this one it is now sorted by um, type and month as well so that's kind of cool and this way I can kind of um, I can kind of um, make sure that my report every time I enter it it is sorted correctly now this one if you remember you can kind of um, actually it was probably this one you could um, make uh, another um, addition to this because you have two layers of sorting you have by type and month and you can have um, you could basically just sort this only by month or only by type or only by year and so you could make all kinds of different sorts and in order to be able to choose which sort you want you could make buttons so let's make the header a little bit bigger let's put all of these guys down a bit and let's make some buttons um, yeah just click up ones that's good and then let's say type plus month is actually the one we have right now so the action we're gonna do is perform a script type and month that's the sort that we're gonna do and I'm gonna change the cursor to a hand over the button that's kinda cool and that way if I make this button then if I press it it will be sorted like this now what I can do is I can alt drag this button over here so to make a second one I'm gonna use my text tool to change the text here and I could say what else could I say uh, type for instance 
And if I sort only by type, then I need a new script for that. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to uh, kind of take this one and I will just duplicate this one. And I'm going to click in here and I'm going to say sort by type alone. So let's delete this. So I have a sort by type script. Now I have to change my script step here to specify that it needs to sort only by type. So if I clear this, then I've got sort only by type. That's good. There is an asterisk here which shows that my script has not yet been saved. So I'm going to hit Command S to save this script. And then I can go in here, button action perform script. But I'm going to choose that other script sort by type. That's kind of cool. Let's try this out. So I'm going to sort by type. And I'm going to sort by type plus month. Now I could probably even add another one. Let's Alt drag this one here. And let's say that instead of type, I'm going to also add one for month. And I'm going to perform another script, but let's go here first in our script workspace. Let's select this one. Let's duplicate this one. And let's say I want to select by month alone. So this can go there. Sort by month. Let's change the settings for this one. Let's clear the type, but keep the month. And let's control S to save this one. Let's close this one again. And so this one, let's double click it, is going to be a different script, sort by month. Okay, cool. So now I can sort by month, I can sort by type, or I can sort by type and month. So that's a really cool way to just have one single um, layout and to just have different types of showing the data and different ways of sorting it and just all the totals are just right. It's so simple and you don't really have to do anything but open this one and choose whichever sort you like. Now because we did put that script trigger on there, if you're going to it's for instance sort by month, if you go out of here and you come back it will again be sorted by type and month because that was the script trigger that we put on there and so that's going to be like the basic sort for this layout but then you can always change it afterwards which is really cool all right hope you guys learned something and see you again soon ciao if you want to learn a ton more about filemaker you can always go to my udemy page where i've got a few filemaker courses that are far more detailed than these short videos that i make on youtube for instance there is a filemaker beginner tutorial uh, where we make a contacts database and this one is free so you can follow it whatever you want and basically in this one we make a simple contacts database which shows you all the basics of how to make layouts and lists and menus etc um, in FileMaker. Then we build on to that one to make a complete FileMaker invoice database which shows you an invoice structure that basically every single company uses. It allows you to make quotes and invoices to track your products and your inventory and it allows you to make all kinds of reports and graphs and stuff like that to track all of your income and stuff like that. And then I've got a FileMaker booking and reservation system which is really cool and shows you a lot of cool tricks and techniques to um, book and reserve items in a company where you do stuff like if you have a hotel or a car or equipment rental or something like that this uh, course is a really interesting one for those kinds of situations so head over there by following the links in the description to learn a ton more about filemaker